Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a new discovery suggesting that our own galaxy, the Milky Way, seems to be getting way way too much gas. In other words, I guess it has a gas problem? Okay, that sounded horrible. Well, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So what exactly do we mean by having a gas problem when it comes to galaxies? Or basically, how can it have gas and why is this a big deal? Well, if you were to actually fly through the interstellar space here, basically the space between stars, you would not really find space. As a matter of fact, space is a very, very sort of a big misnomer. It's not the correct way of calling this environment. So pretty much everything here in between stars is filled with all sorts of stuff usually gas and mostly hydrogen gas. Now, I've already talked about interstellar medium in one of the other videos. You can probably find it somewhere above my head. Um, but the idea here is that all galaxies have this gas and all galaxies need this gas to produce new stars or to do really anything. Normally, when we say the galaxy is dead, or when you hear scientists say that galaxy, they refer to usually something like this. A galaxy that's first of all somewhat orange in color, and normally has this type of a shape. This is what's known as an elliptical galaxy. And here, for the most part, there is no longer any star production. Basically, there is just no gas to make new stars. And because there is no star production, everything that's left here are these really ancient stars that obviously are somewhat orangish in color. These are red dwarfs. These galaxies are for the most part made of red dwarfs and whatever comes with them. Everything else has disappeared and either become a black hole or possibly a neutron star or maybe got kicked out of the system because these are really, really old galaxies. And one day, maybe our galaxy will become the same, but it will probably take a few billion years, possibly even at least 10 billion years for this to happen. But a galaxy can also become, I guess, dead if it's a quasar. In other words, if the actual galactic core becomes much, much more active than a typical galaxy. So here, if the supermassive black hole in the middle of the galaxy becomes too active, usually because just all of this matter and gas starts falling into it, this generates so much energy that the galaxy acquires these really, really strong winds that blow out all of the gas from within it. And when this happens, all of this gas sort of flies away and possibly enters intergalactic medium or maybe goes into the nearby galaxies that could be there. So these two examples show you what scientists mean by dead galaxies. In other words, galaxies that can no longer produce stars. But Milky Way is not a dead galaxy. It's not a very active galaxy, but it does produce stars. Today we believe that roughly around 1.5 masses of the Sun are responsible for producing new stars pretty much every single year. This makes our galaxy relatively alive, but not too active. However, what's interesting is that we always thought that our galaxy was losing mass, because that's kind of what happens to a lot of galaxies. We believe that the gas across the galaxy is slowly leaving and is not being replenished. But turns out that we were actually incorrect. The recent observations and studies using the so-called Doppler shift, where we look at various objects moving away from us and moving toward us, discovered that, for the most part, things seem to be moving toward us. In other words, it seems that there is a very large surplus of gas coming from somewhere into our galaxy. And all of this gas eventually, in millions of years, will very likely start producing a lot of new stars. And to try to map all of this, the scientists use the Hubble telescope, specifically the uh, device responsible for ultraviolet light, and then used light from very distant quasars, which as I mentioned are very active galaxies that produce a lot of light, and then used the light from these really distant objects to um, try to estimate what's going on inside of our own galaxy. So if the light that they detected was a little bit more redshifted, it suggested that the gas was very likely leaving our system. Whereas if the light was a little bit more blue shifted, it was very likely that it's because the gas is coming into our system. And obviously they discovered that a lot more gas was coming in. Okay, maybe not a lot more, but a little bit more enough to make a big difference over millions of years. 
So what exactly is happening and why is this happening? Well, first of all, we don't really know, but there are three possible explanations. The first one involves what's known as intergalactic medium. There might be a video somewhere above my head that explains this in a little bit more detail. But basically, these are galaxies, and between these galaxies there is gas. But this gas is not uniform. Once in a while you might hit something that looks like a gas bubble, where there is more gas than usual. And when that happens, this gas will obviously go inside the galaxy and it might kickstart a new star production. And this is something we have observed in other galaxies. Now, the second explanation involves another study I discussed on the channel when we learned that our galaxy, the Milky Way, is actually a big bully. It does have a tendency to steal things from its partners, from its neighbors, and more specifically from its tiny cousins next to it. Our galaxy has obviously a lot of partners, a lot of dwarf galaxies that orbit around it, and some of them, the bigger ones, like Large Magellanic Cloud that you see right here, do have a lot of gas on the inside. And a lot of this gas is actively being stolen by our galaxy. Now, we already kind of know how much of this is being taken from um, the Large Magellanic Cloud, but there are some smaller galaxies that are actually really difficult to see here, but I'm going to try to find one that I know is right there. Okay, there it is. This is uh, the so-called Galaxy Sculptor. This is a dwarf galaxy and we don't really know how much of the gas is being taken from it. And there are so many of them around the Milky Way that they could technically adapt to all of this gas we're observing that's being stolen from the outside. And the last explanation involves a very large catastrophic event, possibly many many different supernova and many different explosions that occurred uh, sometime millions or possibly billions of years ago, and all of this generated a tremendous amount of gas that left the galaxy. In other words, lots and lots of gas disappeared, and now it's coming back. After possibly like 2 or 3 billion years, it's falling back into the galaxy. And so what we're seeing is the effect of just gas coming back to where it came from. Now, this is obviously something that we can't really prove right now, but we do know based on the observations and based on various studies, like this one right here, that roughly around 2 to possibly 3 billion years ago, there was a very large explosion of star production, creating roughly half of all of the visible stars we have today. Now that's not including our sun, but it's including other stars that are near us. And this of course suggests that, first of all, as we suspected, the star formation in various galaxies actually happens in bursts for the most part. And at the same time, what we're seeing right now with the gas slowly coming back into our galaxy, it might um, kind of hint on the potential star burst sometime in the future. So once the galaxy hits a kind of a limit of gas, and once this gas starts accumulating and creating bigger and bigger chunks, another starburst activity is going to start, turning our galaxy into something as beautiful as this. This is what a typical starburst galaxy looks like when suddenly a lot of new stars are being formed, a lot of new supernova occur, and basically the entire galaxy becomes really, really bright. Now, this is not something we expect to happen anytime soon. As a matter of fact, it will probably take a few billion years before this happens. And by then, a lot of other things might happen. Like, for example, our galaxy is probably going to consume the nearby galaxies, such as the Large Magellanic Cloud. It's also maybe going to come close enough to the Triangulum Galaxy to eat that one as well. And this is when we also expect the Andromeda to make its way closer to our galaxy. So there's going to be a lot of things happening. Eventually, the Milky Way will transform completely. But for now, what we know is that it seems that the gas that's slowly coming into our galaxy may one day kickstart another really important event for creation of new stars. And by becoming a galaxy that's technically a starburst galaxy, the Milky Way will have a chance to create new wonderful worlds that hopefully one day we'll get to explore. Although, that's of course if we're still around. And if the Milky Way does become a starburst, it will probably look something like this. This is an artist's impression on what a Milky Way starburst would look like. So just imagine looking into the night skies and seeing this. That's very, very beautiful. But once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, check out some of the other videos I mentioned, such as for example the video on intergalactic medium, where we explore this empty space between galaxies and I tell you a little bit more about it. On that note, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. Anyway, thank you for watching, and space out.